You're pirates. Pride, tradition, passion. Be proud of who you are and what you are. You're pirates. When they face adversity, plant their feet, take a brace, hit them right in the jaw, and say, bring it on. Want some, get some. ECU Athletics and U.S. Cellular present The Ruffin McNeil Show. The Ruffin McNeil Show is brought to you by U.S. Cellular, the official wireless provider of the ECU Pirates. And now, in his 25th season, the voice of the Pirates, Jeff Charles. Welcome to the Ruffin McNeil Show. Always a big one when the Pirates and the Tar Heels get together, and we'll have highlights coming up on the show. Also, a visit with Shane Carton. What a terrific job he did. His first start as a Pirate. He led East Carolina to the victory at Southern Mississippi, and we'll visit with Shane. Coach Connors will also drop by another installment of our Camp Connors segment. And then a look ahead right back home. Conference USA action next week as the UTEP Miners come to Downey Ficklin Stadium, Bagwell Field. Coach Ruff joins me from Keenan Stadium. That's next right here on the Ruff and McNeil Show. We'll be right back with more of the Ruff and McNeil Show presented by U.S. Cellular and sponsored by Suddenlink. Bundle and save with Suddenlink. Call 1-877-807-3806 today. The head coach of the Pirates, Ruffin McNeil, joins us now. And Ruff, I thought the guys gave supreme effort, played really, really hard, just a little bit too much Carolina in that second half. Well, they were. They got out there defensively up front, got some pressure on us. Um, offensively, they were able to move the football a little bit on our defense. Our defense is pretty stingy, but they, they got some long plays on us today, which we can't allow that. Um, Larry's got a good team. He's got a very talented team over there. And I guess a team like that, you know, I mentioned it before and we talked about it, uh, you have to, uh, you can't make any mistakes. You have to be very minimum against a team of, of, uh, of that talent. Yeah, there was only one turnover, but it was a big one at the minus 15. It was big. You know, we've preached that and harped that as far as taking, a, taking, a, taking that out, ball security, making sure we don't eliminate that and have great ball security. I think that's very important. Uh, but it was a big one. It was down deep in, in our territory. Gave them an opportunity to, 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 to stick one in there. And then the mishap on the uh, kickoff return. Uh, we got to be be smart and know where we are and, and, and that kind of thing. And, and we'll get better at that, too. And I'll tell you, the other positive coming out of this game, the guys ran the ball pretty well. We ran the ball well. I thought Tate did a good job. I thought all four of them really did a good job when you think about it. I thought um, uh, I thought uh, uh, Coop, of course, yep. and then Hunter did a good job. I also thought that uh, Michael Dobson, you saw Mike do some good things there and, and Reggie Bullock make some runs outside and, and, and give us some punch. So we got to continue that. We got to continue to develop that group. And I thought the defense really played hard, Ruff. Yeah, they did. You know, I thought they were put in some tough situations. Uh, I think that unit will be one of the top units, yep. uh, I think, in our league. Mm -hmm. And they have a chance to advance and become a better unit. Uh, we just have to, we can't put them in tough positions, mm -hmm. special teams wise or offensively. Um, and that's one of the things we, I'll talk to a team about tomorrow. Let's now go to those first half highlights. Beautiful day in Chapel Hill, 80 degrees at kickoff time. And rough, we pick up action here. North Carolina has the ball after each team had one possession. And they hit a big one here. It goes to Bernard for 30 yards. I'll tell you what, he's a, he's a really good player, special. Uh, he came back. You know, he's been banged up a little bit. And, uh, this is a good, good play by him. Yeah, and then another pass play here as Renner hits again the pass play to Bernard. He's tough to get on the ground. He goes in from 14 yards for the touchdown, and North Carolina goes up 7 to nothing in the first quarter. Now the Pirates are coming back with the ball, and a big first half rough for Justin Jones, your big target, number 84. He hauls in one here from 14 yards. Well, it was a good play. Uh, I thought Justin really played well, especially in the first half. We did a good job getting the ball to him. He's a, uh, a weapon that we have that will be hard to guard by anyone. So it was a good play, by, good play and good production by Justin. Yeah, and then on second down and four, he picks up a first down here. Justin Jones again with a 15-yard pickup in this drive. And the Pirates are moving the ball well. And East Carolina now inside the uh, second quarter, just inside the second quarter on a fourth down and three. Warren Harvey comes in. He kicks his field goal rough, a 22-yarder. Well, I felt good. You know, one of the things uh, I've been asked about is, about Warren and Warren's uh, consistency. We knew one would come along, and I think you'll see Warren get better as well as some of all the players. 7-3, to three, Pirates are on the board. More action now in the second quarter, and Renner throws this one complete to Eric Ebron. Big tight end, he's about 240 pounds. He makes a big play here. Well, he's a good player. He's got an athlete, and I thought he did a good job spreading the ball around. It, uh, we couldn't really focus on a particular receiver. Uh, this is a good play by them. 
And this is a good play by your defense. You talked about Mikhail Brooks, Big Mike. I tell you what, he was all over the field. This is a great play here as he drops Bernard for a three-yard loss. That was good Good to have Mikhail back. Uh, we played him at defensive end today, and he's that kind of guy that could do both of them. And I was, it was good to see him back on the field. Big play by him. And then on third down and goal, a really nice play by Terry Williams. There's another one of your nose guards, Ruff, and a loss of a yard on this play. Well, Terry's the guy that fits the, uh, the nose guard position in this scheme, and we look for Terry to get better. He's back. He's got two games under his belt. Still got to get in game condition. He was in pretty good condition, but good play by Terry. So it forces the field goal attempts. The Pirates do a great job keeping North Carolina out of the end zone, and then Casey Barth comes in. He gets the 20-yard field goal to go. And North Carolina has a 10-3 lead. Pirates coming back with the ball now. And Reggie Bullock run with, uh, he's doing a good job running the football for you, Ruffy. goes for 16 yards on this one. Well, it's good to see Reg uh, hesitate and slash and get us some positive yards here. Uh, yards here. Uh, Reggie can stay fresh because we have a committee of running backs there. So good play by Reggie. And then Shane Carden throws this one complete to uh, Deion Arrington. Nice pass play here. Biggest one of the day. Goes for 29 yards. Well, it's good, you know, see Deion get back in the, in the mix of our offense and Shane did a good job finding him, and Deion did a good job of getting open on this play. And then on second down and 10, nine yards, it goes to Justin Jones, big number 84, with another catch in the first half. He had five of them. And then Michael Dobson, another one of your running backs, gets in here on a first down and then 10, picks up nine yards. You guys did a good job running the ball, I thought, on first down. Well, I did. You know, that's one of the things I think, you know, one of the things you want our play action to be good and become better is running the football. And Lincoln's done a good job of integrating play action pass into our game. And, you have to have a running game for it to be effective. But the Pirates can't get the ball in the end zone. They have to settle for the field goal attempt. Warren Harvey comes in again, Coach, and he hits this one from 26 yards out. Man, that was tough. We, we, we wanted to get points, but, again, we have confidence in Warren, and Warren, Warren will be a guy that will come through for us in the clutch, and we'll need him here throughout the season. North Carolina gets the ball back less than two minutes to go in the half, and your defense has to come up big, and you certainly do as Renner is sacked, a loss of two, and Maurice Falls comes up with a big play. Well, it was a good play. I thought we had the strip right there by Maurice and uh, it did come out. We just need, didn't get on, get on it quick enough. And then fourth down and 11 coming up. They have to settle for the field goal attempt, and Casey Barth doesn't miss many rough, but he missed this one from 34 yards, and you guys go into the locker room with some momentum. Uh, he's been perfect. Yeah, he missed the play PAT or a field goal, and, um, you know, this was big by us, and I felt, felt good going in the half. Stay tuned for more of the Rough and McNeil Show. Brought to you in part by Pizza Hut's $10 Pizza and these local nationwide agents. Welcome back to the Ruff and McNeil Show. Pirates are right in it at halftime. It's a 10-6 ball game. Ruff, you're on the road, an underdog. I guess you have to feel pretty good at halftime. Well, we did. You know, wish we would have gotten points, like I mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to come out the second half and start fast. We felt good about where we were at that particular time. But starting fast, sustaining, and finishing were, were points we made at halftime. Execution on all three sides of the ball, I thought, um, were essential in a game, especially away, but any game against a top flight opponent. But any game, you want to have those three, three elements. Let's now go to those second half highlights. North Carolina has the ball as we come out in the second half, and Giovanni Bernard runs for a loss of two yards on this one as Adonis Armstrong, and there's Terry Williams again coming up big with a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, Terry's got a, that knack. He can make plays and finish plays, and we'll need Terry to step up, especially next week at UTEP. Pirates get the ball back now, and Hunter Furr goes for a four yards. You know Hunter was really fired up to play this game. He started his career right here at North Carolina. Well, it was good. Good play by Hunter. I thought he, he ran well today. He may have tweak, tweaked a little bit, tweaked his back a little bit, but I thought he had had a, a, a good day for Hunter, and, and I think he'll get better. He's one of those guys that we, we were pleasantly surprised with today. Pirate drive stalls. North Carolina coming back with the ball now. This was a big pass play. Renner hits Sean Tapley, 62 yards, and a touchdown here. That was tough. You know, we uh, uh, we had it. We thought we had it play pretty good, and um, just a little misread here. And you, you can't misread against guys of that talent. 17 to six, the score, and then North Carolina puts another touchdown on the board to make it 24 to six, and then the Pirates come back. And we talked about Reggie Bullock. He ran with authority, and this is a nice run for seven yards. That was good. I mean, I think Reggie got us out of trouble here and and uh, put us in a chance to to, uh, to give us some breathing room a little bit. And, Reggie has that ability and potential to do that. And this was the biggest run of the day, Ralph, on third down and 30. Ventavious Cooper goes for 36 yards and a great effort. Tay is a guy that's got a special, special knack to him, and uh, we got to get it, get the ball in, in his hands quicker. Uh, the initial part of the game, and 
and, and, and find ways to make sure we take advantage of, of Tay and what he brings to the table. Well, you don't pick up too many first downs on third down and 30, but Cooper was able to do it in the third quarter. North Carolina has a 24-6 lead. We now go to the fourth quarter, and uh, Cooper's starting to feel it a little bit now rough. He goes for 10 yards on this one. Yeah, Coop's got it. Tay's a really good special football player, good football player, and, and uh, he has a knack for seeing it, great vision, and has a, a, that low center, center of gravity. He can make plays. Casey Barth adds a field goal late in the fourth quarter. The Pirates coming back with the ball now offensively, and uh, Shane Carden throws this one complete to Reese Wiggins. I know you want to try and get the ball in Reese's hands a little bit more. Yeah, he's another one of my weapons. Uh, uh, you know, his plays, but it's, it's also players. we got to make sure we get the ball into our players' hands. North Carolina wins it 27-6. to We were moving the ball in the second quarter. We are doing a great job. Uh, it was easy. We are moving down. We just didn't finish the drive. we got we got to take advantage of against a good team like this on the road. You got to finish drives like that. You got to get touchdowns instead of field goals. Um, then third quarter, we had a couple uh, unfortunate plays there. They scored, and I think we let that affect us too much. It's definitely disappointing. Uh, one thing I'm big on is saying that we have to do our own job, and the O line has to, you know, work hard as a unit. And we played really hard today. We really gave it our all. And uh, you know, there's still stuff we could have done better. There's definitely stuff you can always do better. We need to keep working hard. But uh, you know, we're we're warriors. You know, we're pirates, man. We keep our heads up. So Carolina gets the victory 27-6, to and rough in that second half, uh, they really turned it up defensively, didn't they? Well, they did. They, uh, I, I thought they applied pressure. They got pressure around Shane, and the coverages, may, uh, they blended the coverages very well. Um, we'll, we'll watch the film and, and see. It's probably a combination of both. Uh, they were able to get pressure, and, you know, we, we got to get rid of the football at the same time. And Shane will get better at that. The more reps he gets, you'll see him get better. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of confidence in all of our guys and all of our kids. We'll get it fixed that way. Defensively, I think we could have turned up, got the ball out a little bit more. We had a chance for some takeaways, and we talked about it going hand in hand. I think there's ball security on offense, but I also think there's uh, takeaways and turnovers on defense that must be caused to help the team. And, you know, defensively, some people will say, well, there's some missed tackles. But I'll tell you what, Carolina's got some really talented guys. Yeah. It, it looks easy sometimes from the stands, but it's a lot tougher down there on the field. Well, you know, there was some that I felt like we, we should have made, grab cloth and, and, and bring our feet with the – but you got to give those guys credit. Uh, Gio, he'll be in the league somewhere. And those guys they got are good players and those receivers. But but at the same time, we have the same. We got players East Carolina too, and and we feel fundamentally we could have done a lot better job of tackling. We come back. We'll have more with Ruff right after this. Remember, Pirate fans, you can be a part of the show. It's Ask Coach Ruff, powered by U.S. Cellular. Text the word COACH to 94597. You'll be asked to submit your question to Coach Ruff. He'll pick one to answer each week. Here's Coach Ruff. This week's text is from Owen from Jacksonville. And the text says, what is your biggest win as the head coach of the Pirates? Well, I have to sum it up with two. Uh, the first one versus Tulsa, the last second play. Uh, in end zone from Dominique Davis to Justin Jones was a big one. And then the win versus State in overtime here at home and Dottie Ficklin, uh, those two wins uh, sort of combined as two of the biggest wins I've had as a head coach here at East Carolina. Thanks for the question, Owen, and go Pirates! The Ruff and McNeil Show, presented by U.S. Cellular, continues with sponsorship by BB&T. Sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. He's paid his dues here at East Carolina, his third year in the program. The redshirt sophomore from Houston, Shane Carden. What a great debut he made for the Pirates in Hattiesburg. Let's take an up-close-and-personal look. A lot of excitement. Um, you know, first college start, pretty big deal to me, pretty big deal for my family, and uh, I think pretty big deal for this, uh, this school right now. If you picked up on a hint of confidence in Shane Carden, you'd be spot on. The 20-year-old gunslinger from Houston has the kind of moxie and swagger you want in a quarterback. Yeah, we really, really trust him. Uh, you know, we respect him. Uh, he's done a lot. He, you know, he's earned this spot. Uh, he's done little things just in, in and out with, you know, with film and, and working out. Just, you know, he just does everything right. And I, I think everybody trusts him and believes in him. And I, and I think, you know, that goes a long way on the field. In fact, his teammates thought so much of Carden, 
They voted him offensive captain before his first start at Southern Miss. Oh, definitely. That means a lot, you know, when uh, the rest of your team votes you a captain. Uh, your first week starting obviously means uh, you've done something right, and that means that your teammate definitely trusts in you, uh, and that means a lot. For Carden, making that first start in Hattiesburg had special meaning. You see, Carden's childhood hero is none other than former Golden Eagle Brett Favre. You're right. When I looked out and saw his name, I kind of laughed and just, uh, you know, took it, just took it as it was, and uh, enjoyed it a little bit. Actually, when he first was here, I used to call him uh, Brett Farr. Just uh, when he was starting out, and he was a scout team guy, and uh, just he was with us for a little bit of practice. And just every time I see him, I'd be like, "What's up, Brett?" So uh, yeah, it's kind of funny that uh, that's his favorite player because we used to joke and call him that. Carden has been joked for years that he looks like Farr, but comparisons to a future Hall of Famer, that's a bit of a stretch. It is worth noting, however, that Carden modeled much of the way he plays the game after his idol. Like Favre, Carden looks like a kid on Christmas morning when he's playing football. His footwork and ability to keep plays alive mirror Favre as well. Might have just been from watching when I was little, just seeing him do the plays that he did. I just enjoyed watching and maybe he just somehow got into my game. Um, but just I think it's helped out our team a lot. I'm just having quick feet, you know, to move quick in the pocket, um, and just be able to make plays outside of the pocket. You know, you kind of you kind of let. The uh, defense kind of start, you know, falling over themselves. And we practice scramble drill a lot, so our, our receivers know what to do. Um, and I don't think the defense really does. I think that carries over with our offense. Uh, I think he's good for us, and I think we do have a lot of fun, uh, you know, with him back there at quarterback. And just maybe the gunslinger from Texas is set to write his own legend. I'm Brian Meador for the Ruffin McNeil Show. Five, four, three, two, one. I went our fifth segment today with our speed development package. Today we have Brad Warnick with us. Brad does a great job with our speed development program. He's actually our fastest quarterback. Uh, he really performs our drills well and has adapted well and really made good progress in the speed program. The first drill that we're gonna do today is horizontal hurdle jumps. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to improve an elastic response off the ground. What Brad's going to do is he's going to drive his feet to the ground as he jumps over the hurdle. And the ground is the enemy. He's trying to get up off of the ground as quickly as possible. Uh, so we're going to do six hurdles in succession as quickly as possible. That's it. Quick. There you go. Quick off the ground. That's it. Stay balanced up. Good. That's it. Quick off the ground. Quick. The next drill that Brad's going to execute is the speed bound. Speed bounding is very specific to acceleration. We're trying to get big separation, force into the ground, stay close to the ground, and take ground in a minimal number of steps. He's going to fly into the drill. Good. OK, Brad did a great job with those drills. Uh, you can see his athleticism. I've really enjoyed coaching Brad. He's got tremendous character and work ethic. He's really a team player, and we're looking for good things in the future from Brad uh, after he graduates as well. Camp Connors is brought to you by these local nationwide agents. This week's Look Ahead is brought to you by the Eye Care Center, eye doctors focused on you and the official eye care provider of the Pirates. Sure will be good to get back home. The Pirates have been on the road for three consecutive weeks and the UTEP Miners come to town. Mike Price, the head coach, and they have an outstanding running back in Nathan Jeffrey. It'll be a tough game back in league play. Let's take an up close and personal look at our scouting report now with our Brian Beatle. The UTEP Miners have had a brutal out-of-conference schedule, so their 1-3 record is a bit deceiving. Losses to Oklahoma, Ole Miss, and Wisconsin have tested Mike Price's club. The Miners are going to try to establish the run game against the Pirates with Nathan Jeffrey leading the charge. The sophomore is averaging a ridiculous 8 yards per carry. Senior quarterback Nick Lamison is not among the elite passers in the conference, but he is steady and rarely turns the ball over. On the defensive side of the ball, UTEP is a veteran bunch with eight starting seniors, including all three linebackers and all four defensive backs. Keep in mind, they held the Pirates to just 17 points a season ago. This is just the fourth meeting between the two schools. The Pirates' only loss to the Miners was last year at the Sun Bowl. Kickoff next week is set for 7 p.m. at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. The game will be televised on WITN. I'm Brian Meador for the Ruffin McNeil Show.
It'll be great to get back here at Downey Ficklin Stadium Bagwell Field. The Pirates have not been home for three weeks, and UTEP will be here. We hope you'll be here, too. Remember, now that's a night game coming up on Saturday at 7 o'clock. Thanks so much for being with us on the Ruffin McNeil Show. We'll see you next week right here. The Ruffin McNeil Show has been presented by U.S. Cellular. Hello better. The Ruffin McNeil Show is an exclusive presentation of IMG. America's home for college sports.